Good morning. Happy Monday. And I just have two short announcements. Today, we are opening up the immersion signups. They're going to go live on the computer, so be sure to sign up right away. And then also, if you're wondering what an immersion trip is, we have a meeting Thursday night. It's called the Mission Networking Night. We're going to have local organizations that we partner with if you want to serve locally. And then also, if you want to know what an immersion trip is, there's going to be student leaders there, and you can ask questions. I would like to introduce our speaker today. He is part of the Hageman Face Series. He spoke to us last night, and he's returning today. Please welcome John Cotton Richmond. It is good to be here. And for those of you all who were here last night, let me say, good morning, insignificant potsherds. <laughs> for almost 15 years, I have been investigating and prosecuting human trafficking cases around the globe. And whether it's working at the United Nations or working in the US Department of Justice or for an NGO or at the Human Trafficking Institute where I currently serve, I can tell you that this is difficult and challenging and meaningful work. Because human trafficking cases are full of problems. There are problems identifying victims, there are problems gathering evidence, there are problems with the law, there's problems winning victims' confidence, and there's problems for victims overcoming years of rape, trauma, and abuse. There are just lots and lots of problems. And I've learned a few things about dealing with problems and overcoming them. And so this morning, I would ask you, what is your problem? What are the challenges currently facing you? We all have them, and they all matter. Some of them are outside of your control. Things have happened that you have nothing to do with. And others, quite frankly, are self-inflicted. In fact, most of the problems that most of us suffer are at our own doing. A few years ago, I met a young woman who had a problem. Her name was Nadia, and Nadia came to the United States legally on a year-long visa, and she had hopes and dreams for the future. She had the American dream, and for a while, things were going well in her new home in Chicago. She had a job, and she had a church that she attended, and she went to the gym with friends, and then she met a trafficker, and he began to isolate her and lie to her. He gave her a job in his massage parlor, gave her an apartment to live in, and then isolated her from her friends and prevented her from going to church. He eventually raped and beat her, forced her to work, and ultimately forced her to engage in prostitution for his economic gain. He branded her with tattoos above the collar line on her neck, covering her left breast and her right wrist, and then across her entire back. He told her that no man would ever love her again because his name was inked all over her body, and that if she ever ran away, he would cut the tattoos off of her. She was scared. She was alone, and she was losing hope for the future. And at this time, I had never met Nadia. She was hidden. But I was working with a team of federal agents that were investigating her trafficker. And we were planning a raid, and I was getting search warrants executed by the magistrate judge. And just a few days before we raided the facility, she penned this in her journal. And I'll tell you that when she wrote this, she had no idea about the enforcement operation that was going on. Here's what she said. She said, if I think about my future, my future life, I imagine nothing but tears, bruises on my body, being beaten for no reason, just because he is in a bad mood. This is not life. If it is, it is only the life of a slave. Am I really such a bad person that I deserve this kind of life and treatment? 
I can no longer live being scared all the time. I am tired of being manipulated all the time and being physically and mentally hurt. My God, I need your justice. Please. Why is all this happening to me? Am I so bad that I deserve it? I tolerate it as much as I can, but I am exhausted already. Help me, God. I need you. You see, Nadia had a problem. Her trafficker was holding her as a slave, and she wanted it all to stop. And to be clear, she was not crying out to God to make her beatings less severe or less frequent. She wasn't with pleading for someone to come and make her trafficker marginally nicer. She was not asking for a cut of the profits from the criminal enterprise. She wanted to get to the root of the problem. And this is the striking thing is that when our problems are extreme and severe, we often want to get to the root of the problem. But many of our problems are not so severe. And so we avoid the root issues. Instead, most of us just fiddle with our problems. We think about them. We compromise with them. We rationalize them. We talk to our friends about them. We try to mitigate the consequences of them and make their ill effects less obvious to others. Most of us spend time treating symptoms and refuse to attack the disease. This is a long pattern in history. Let me give you a few examples. Adam and Eve wore silly clothes made of leaves and blamed each other to avoid dealing with the root problem of Applegate. Cain committed the world's first recorded homicide, killed his brother and alienated himself from his parents forever because he did not want to deal with the root problem of jealousy. Sarah forced her slave girl to have non-consensual sex with her husband Abraham because she did not want to deal with the root problem of her lack of faith. David murdered Uriah to keep his sexual assault of Bathsheba hidden. But Nathan, the prophet, ultimately got to the root of the problem. Jonah burned with hate for Nineveh and had to spend three messy days inside a fish's belly to avoid telling them about God's love. And the older brother sat outside the party pouting in his self-righteousness because he did not want to deal with the root of his own self-reliance. And just think about Exodus chapter 3. God hears the Hebrews' plight of the nation suffering in slavery, and Scripture tells us that he moves to solve the problem. He sent Moses, not with instructions to argue for better working hours or safer conditions in the brick kiln. No, this was not a negotiation. He told Pharaoh, let my people You see, the root cause of slavery in Egypt is the same as the root cause of slavery today. Perhaps the best way to illustrate this is to ask you to consider the root cause of rape. What is the root cause of rape? Is it short skirts? The overconsumption of alcohol? Flirty behavior? media culture? I think any thoughtful analysis would lead us to the only logical conclusion that the root cause of rape are rapists. You see, we could legislate lower hemlines. We could prohibit the consumption of alcohol in our country. Oh, wait, I think we tried that. Didn't work. You see, we could do all these things, but they don't get to the root cause of rape because the root cause is rapists. And I would suggest to you that the root cause of human trafficking is not poverty. It is not migration. It is not lack of education or job opportunities. Yes, all these things make people more vulnerable to traffickers, but they don't cause trafficking. Because the root cause of trafficking 
are the traffickers that elect to commit this crime. And that's why Moses went to the root of the problem by going to Pharaoh directly. Pharaoh was the trafficker. So the question to each of us is this. How will we address the root problems of our lives and in our culture? Perhaps you are struggling academically with a class you're taking. You know you are behind. You get that sick feeling in your stomach every time you think about it. You can ignore it. You can complain about it. You can talk to your friends about it. But it won't go away. The only way to get to the root of the problem is get to the library, find a tutor, and master the information. Or maybe you're in a romantic relationship that you know isn't quite going anywhere. It's not bad. If it was bad, you'd break up. But it's just okay. And you don't want to deal with the difficult emotional toll of breaking up. And if that's you, let me suggest do all your friends a favor because they are exhausted from hearing about it. <laughs> Get to the root of the problem and end it. And then you can move forward. Perhaps your problem is a nagging bad habit or a dysfunctional family relationship or a boundaries issue or addiction or finances. Whatever it is, ask yourself, what is behind it? How can I get to the root of it? And then in God's power and through his grace, attack it. Run in a way to win the prize. And let's be clear, this is not about self-help. This is not about becoming nicer people or better people. It is a response to God's amazing grace and following in his example of getting to our root problem of sin. And if we build these habits, we are going to be better equipped to take on the grand challenges the world has to offer. And so I want to encourage you as you go forward, stay in touch, send me emails and tell me about how you're attacking the root problem, because that's what we at the Human Trafficking Institute are about. Taking years of experience to stop traffickers, free victims, and decimate the prevalence of trafficking. And I can tell you that Helena testified at her trial, that is, Nadia testified at her trial. It was just across the lake, and she boldly told the truth to jury and she read that diary entry, and they were fighting back tears. And her trafficker received a life sentence. And the same God who was there with her, the God who is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, loves you and is with you no matter what problems you face. Thank you.